Hello my dear friends, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be discussing the basis of a quotient space for which we are varying from the y. We already knew my basis of the quotient space v by w or sorry, the dimension of the quotient space v by w is same as dimension of v minus dimension of w. We already knew about the dimension. Now it's time to find out each and every element. Okay. The basis could be find out easily by using this theorem. Let's read this theorem once. If my v is a finite dimensional vector space, so we already know that we work on only finite dimensional vector space and undergraduate level. So we are working on a finite dimensional vector space over R. My u is a subspace of v. Since my v is finite dimensional, my u is also finite dimensional. Finite dimensional means it has a basis with finitely many elements. So let v1 till vk, this k elements be the basis of u. By using this k element, what we did is my v1, vk, then vk plus 1 till vn is an extended basis of v. What is the meaning of extended basis? If I have a basis for a subspace, I add a few more elements to it to make the basis of my entire vector space that the new basis is called the extended basis of the previous basis of a subspace. That means I can say this is an extended basis of this because I use those element and some more element to form the basis of the entire vector space. So my v1 till vk is a basis of u and from v1 till vn is an extended basis of v. If you know this much, then my vk plus 1 plus u till vn plus u, this cosets are nothing but basis of the quotient space v by okay. Few more thing, question arises, does there always exist extended basis of v by using any of the subspace? The answer is yes. If I know the basis of any subspace, I can extend that to the basis of the vector space. This is always possible. Hence only this theorem is valid for finite dimensional vector space. Okay. Without proving that result that extended basis always exists, we will prove this theorem. So let's start the proof. My claim is my this is a basis of V by U. Okay. Something is a basis if and only if. It is linearly independent and it spends that v by u. These two things we need to prove. Before that also, we already knew my dimension of v by u is same as dimension of v minus dimension of u. We here, I know my dimension of u is k since there is k element inside a basis and my dimension of v is n. So my dimension of v by u must be n minus k. You will observe over here there are n minus k elements. So we are on the correct path or we can verify that theorem that we have learned. Let's start the proof. My claim one is to prove by the set vk plus 1 plus u till vn plus 1 is linearly independent. So how do you prove any given set is linear linear? If I try to say in my word, I say only linear combination to reach zero bar is the trivial way. Then we say the given set is linearly independent. That means if I take a linear combination is equal to the zero vector, then all of the coefficients or I say all of the scalars must be zero. Right? You can search the definition and write it once. If you don't know, write it in the comment box. Okay? Let's start. So, what I will do? I will take a linear combination of this is equal to the zero vector inside V by U. While making the linear combination, I will use some scalars from R. And at the end, I will prove all the scalar must be zero. Okay? This is our claim. Okay. Let's start. So, consider... Uh, what I will do is I will use a scalar alpha k plus 1. I will use a subscript matching with the subscript of this v. Okay. So 
vk plus 1 plus u plus dot 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 plus alpha n vn plus u is equal to the zero vector inside this v by u that is zero plus u okay. after this by the operations on the quotients we know that it is same as alpha k plus 1 v k plus 1 plus dot 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 alpha n v n plus u is equal to 0 plus u. Now we know these two cosets are same if and only if the difference of the representative is there inside it. Therefore I know this minus 0 means this alpha k plus 1 v k plus 1 plus dot 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 plus alpha n v n must be an element of u. This minus 0 means the same thing, right? Difference of the representative is this only. Okay. This is element of u. What are the information given about u? u is a subspace generated by this element. If I tell this is an element of u, means that element must be linear combination of this element because that is a basis. Basis element spend every element. Hence, what I will do, I will write this as a linear combination of V1 till V. Okay? Let's do that. So, we know alpha k plus 1, Vk plus 1 plus dot 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 alpha and Vn is an element of U. Where U is nothing but span of this element, right? Since it is a basis, it is span of V1 to Vk. Hence, I can write my this element. as a linear combinations of the elements from this that is alpha 1 v1 plus dot 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 alpha k v k where my scalars alpha i are coming from r okay also one thing when we considered this that time also you should write my alpha r coming from r it's understood but you should write okay so after this what i will do i will take all the elements to the one side Therefore, I get alpha 1 v1 dot 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 alpha k v k minus alpha k plus 1 v k plus 1 minus dot 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 minus alpha n v n is equal to my zero vector inside v. Correct? Okay. Now you observe, we here, we here I am covering from v1 till v n. That is nothing but the basis of my vector space v. Since that is a basis for a vector space V, I know that the set must be linearly independent. Means if I take a linear combination to 0 V, then my alpha I, the scalars must be 0 for all I running from 1 till n. Correct? Since, I will write since my V1 till Vn is linearly independent. Since I know my alpha i are 0 from 1 to n, therefore I know my alpha i is 0 from i running from k plus 1 till n also. Since it is 0 for 1 to n, it is true for k plus 1 till n also. Therefore, I can conclude my set vk plus 1 plus u till uh, vn plus u is linearly independent because whatever scalar I choose those are zero hence I can conclude the only way to reach zero bar is the trivial okay. if you still have some confusion about linear algebra uh, sorry linearly independence go and watch one of my video I will keep the link over here you see okay now we go for the second claim so till now we prove the set given which we wanted to be basis is linearly independent. Now we will prove it is spanning set also. That means my second claim is my span of vk plus 1 plus u till vn plus u is same as v by u. So what is the meaning of the spanning set? That means it is a generating set. That means any element I take from this, I should be able to write as a linear combination of this elements. So what I consider is, 
for any x plus u from v by u. Now, if I consider this, what I want, I want this to be a linear combination from this element, right? But over here, this implies me my x must be an element of v, v this v capital V, which is nothing but having the basis as v one till v n. Okay. Okay. So that means my x can be written as my b one v one plus dot 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 plus b n v n, where. My b i's are nothing but some real numbers. That means I can write this x as a linear combination of this n elements. After this, I consider x plus u. That is nothing but summation of b i v i i running from one to n plus u, right? By the operations of cosets, I know this is same as. Summation b i v i plus u, where i is running from one to n. Okay, you can write for each the term, but I feel this is also fine. You can understand it well. Also, since my v one till v k are the elements of u, this implies me my v one plus u is same as Zero plus u, right? We know that if the element or the representative is an element of that set, then that is same as a zero coset, right? We know the property. My x, oh, sorry, I should not use the word x or letter x. Y plus u is same as zero plus u, if and only if my y is an element of u. Correct. So that can be applied. So similarly, I will write my v i plus u. Is same as zero plus u for all i running from one till k. Correct. That means I know this all cosets running from one to n from them from one to k are zero cosets. Hence, I will write it somewhere. I want to write it somewhere. I will rub the top part. Okay. So I know. My x plus u, okay. So my x plus u is same as submission going from i running from i know from till k everything is nothing but a zero coset, and adding a zero coset does not affect my cosets. Hence, I'll write from k plus one till n b i v i plus u. I hope the student are. Getting what I am trying to write inside the submissions. What I did over here, I had n elements. From those n elements, one till k are nothing but the zero cosets. Hence, I remove that part. So this means what? This means the given x plus u is written as a linear combination. If you want, I'll write it clearly. I write this is same as b k plus one, v k. Plus one plus u plus dot 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 b n v n plus u, right? X plus u. Hence, you can conclude any element from v by u can be written as a linear combination of this element. Hence, my v by u is nothing but generated by v k plus one plus u till v n plus. U. Hence, I will conclude my v k plus one plus u till v n plus u is basis of v by u. We hear theorems ends, but few points that we should remember from this theorem is: suppose inside exam they have asked you the question. Prove that dimension of v by u is same as dimension of v minus dimension of u, and you don't remember that proof. Then you can write this proof, and at the end you conclude this implies my dimension of v by u is n minus k, which is nothing but dimension of v minus dimension of the uh, u. So you can use this proof. One thing. 
so theorem was really important right so from this theorem to apply it into the example what we need is suppose my v is a vector space and u is a subspace what we do is we find out the basis for u extend that basis to v as many element you added that element as a representative of the coset will become the basis for your quotient space that we see over here these are nothing but the elements that we have extended right what we did is vk plus 1 till vn are nothing but then extension of the basis from u to v hence we will see one example the idea will get clear but for now you can understand if you want to find out the basis of any quotient space you need the basis of the subspace extended to the basis of that vector space as many element you added in the extension those as a representative of the coset becomes the basis of the quotient space okay thank you so much for watching this video in the next video there will be examples and in that video only you will find the next quiz okay thank you